I'm here at SALT 2019 with Sean Rad, the founder and former CEO of Tinder. So Sean, what does the world most misunderstand about Tinder? Tinder isn't about one type of connection. You know, we really focus on making new connections and people can make out of those connections whatever they want. Some people will meet their life partner, some people will meet their best friend, um, a short-term relationship, a long-term relationship. It really at the core is about creating connections and not defining what kind of connections those are. Definitely not defining them. So what would you do differently if you were still running Tinder? Tinder started because uh, as much as technology brings us together and mobile phones are bringing us together, at the same time it was making us very isolated. So in 2012 when we started thinking about the idea for Tinder, it was sort of a period where people wanted help or a new way to connect and use technology, the same thing that's in some ways isolating us, use it to sort of empower us and bring us together. Um, but I think now people are overwhelmed by technology. It is um, Facebook, Tinder, Instagram is taking away a lot of our attention. Um, they're giving us value back, but I think the cost of that value is pretty high. So I think what you're going to start seeing um, with Tinder and other companies, or if I was there, I'd be ensuring you'd see this with Tinder, uh, is giving you that value, but requesting less time from the user. So instead of swiping and swiping or scrolling through Instagram, I think we can use technologies that are maturing like AI to help us get to the right piece of content that is most valuable to us, the right person. Um, and, and AI can help us create new experiences around connecting, around community. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I think you're gonna see a lot of that coming soon. Interesting, so what is next for you? Um, I've been focusing a lot of my time on mental health. Uh, it, it's something that's personal to me. Uh, a lot of uh, my friends and people I know have struggled with mental health issues. And if you look at what's happening in the world, just statistically, suicide is the second largest killer um, for people under the age of 30. Uh, one in four people suffer from mental illness. One in three people in the world, in the United States, uh, suffer from debilitating anxiety. And one in two will say that they're, they're unhappy with their overall mental health. And if you look at what's happened over time, um, uh, baby boomers, 30% of baby boomers will say that they're unhappy with their mental health. But as you get younger to Gen Z, Gen Z being the generation that grew up with technology, we call them digital natives, 60% will say they're unhappy with their mental health. Um, so I would define that as a crisis, uh, and it's, it's something that's personal to me, and I've been spending the last year or so researching the issues, spending time with neuroscientists, um, psychotherapists, sleep experts, to really understand what's going on um, and see what I can do to help. Thank you for being here with Thank us. So that was Sean Rad on Tinder and mental health, but not necessarily the connection between the two.